we've been thinking about succession, how to set the company up for success for the next 10, 15, 20 years, how to make sure the company continues to grow and how to basically protect the long-term employees that are in the company. If we were to sell this company outright to a third party, to a private equity, there's a 50-50 chance that things would get broken up and it wouldn't, it wouldn't continue as it is. So we've explored other options, but we came down to the ESOP as being the best option. We wanted to keep Amigo's legacy, culture, and most importantly, its valuable employees. And we wanted to allow the long-term hardworking employees to benefit directly in Amigo's future success. So our solution here at Amigos was to actually sell the company to the Amigos Employee Stock Ownership Plan and Trust. So the ESOP purchased 100% of the outstanding stock of Growth Management Corp on March 26, 2017. We're all owners. Why? Why did we do this? Amigos remains independently owned. We're not part of a private equity. We're not part of a strategic buyer. We preserve and hopefully enhance our culture. Long-term employees become the beneficial owners of Amigos. That's the why. Uh, the, other, the other things that happen is basically we continue as is. Uh, I continue as the chief executive officer. All leadership personnel remain. We pay off the loan from our profits, as I said earlier, and then our profits fuel our continued growth. The contributions uh, plus the increased value of Amigos equals growth in the individual ESOP account. Just remember what got us here. Um, belief in Amigos. Belief in the mission of Amigos. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. The hard work. We have, uh, in Amigos, we have some of the greatest collection of hard workers that I think you would ever find. And we just need to continue that. The commitment and dedication to our ideals and always, always cooperation, cooperation and constructive feedback that flows up from the people that are working closest to the customers and actually the customers themselves rather than flowing down from the top. So we need feedback, ideas for how to make the business better. What's the difference that we can make? And so we're going to talk in terms of pennies and nickels here. And the basic question is, how can we turn four pennies into a nickel? And what can each of you do to make up the difference of that penny? How can we find those extra pennies? Well, one extra penny is that we're productive when, we, when we're on the clock. In fact, we're extra productive. One of the things that I have observed about Amigos over 37 years is in the best stores, the employees are able to do about two or three times the amount of work that lots of other people can do. And that includes many of you. So that's being really productive, encouraging fellow coworkers to be as productive as possible. Portioning the food exactly according to the menu spec. So when we're on the rail, we're railing, we're making uh, breakfast burritos, we're making soft tacos, we're making them exact. Keeping the thermostats at the correct level, sharing good ideas with uh, other people, making drinks exactly to menu specs. We have a lot of drinks that we make. Uh, we make fast and frosty, we make shakes, we make glacier twists, we make smoothies. On the Capelli side, we make iced coffee and lattes and mochas and all those drinks. The more we can make those just exact, well, it does two things. A, we have consistent product that goes to the customer, and B, we don't have a lot of waste. Reducing food and paper waste. The biggest uh, cost item for a business like ours is uh, food and paper costs. It accounts for 29, 30% of our sales. So the extent that we manage those costs efficiently, we turn those four pennies into a nickel. In terms of customer service, how do we collect more pennies? Well, we provide outstanding customer, customer service. We truly live our mission every day. We're going to talk about our mission at the end. Make sure every customer order is rung in correctly and they get what they order. 
enthusiastically inviting our customers to return, making a personal connection with every customer you help. Learn and use their name. Learn and use their name. Creatively suggestive selling. That is one thing that uh, we encourage with our mystery shopper measurement. And it's one thing that a lot of companies have found is a hidden driver to people returning more often. Let's look at more ways to grow our company. Well, we grow our company by, in the store that we work in, if we have increasing sales from this year compared to last year. We grow our company by managing those costs that I talked about. And the two biggest variable, the two biggest categories are food paper costs and also labor payroll costs. We grow our company outside of the individual store level, stores that we've had for many years by adding new stores. And we've just added a new store in Omaha. We did an overwhelming amount of sales the first several weeks and we continue to do good sales. So if we add more locations, especially more locations like 147th and Maple, we will add to the EBITDA that Kara has talked about. So it's a, big it's a big cycle here. The more profit that we make, the more that we can grow. The more that we can grow, the more profit we can make. And the way you got to think about this now is that that profit and the valuation of the company trickles down into your individual, individual ESOP account. So the whole key is here turning four pennies into a nickel increases our personal ownership by increasing the value of our ESOP, ESOP account. In 1980, before we opened our first store on June 17, 1980, we had this mission statement. And uh, so we're recasting this mission statement uh, so that we can put it more through the eyes of the owners, so that you are the owners. So you got to think seriously about what our mission is today and what it was then. Number one item is to prepare high quality food served promptly with a smile. The building block of any food business is you got to have good food. If you don't have good food, nothing else matters too much. So we do a lot of work, as you know, as all of you know, we need to keep doing that so that we have high quality food. We want to provide an exceptional, exceptional value added eating experience. What does value add, added mean? Well, here's one thing that comes to mind. We have a salsa bar, right? On that salsa bar, we have things that we make, again, fresh daily, every, every day or every other day. We have Diablo salsa, we have salsa verde, we have spicy sauce, we have Hidden Valley. Uh, we're in the Mexican food business and one of the things that we're most known for is Hidden Valley dressing because we make it fresh, we make it with key ingredients. Value added means we've got extra items on the salsa bar. It means we have, we, the customer in the dining room comes and orders at the counter. They sit down, we bring them their food. Back in 1980, almost exclusively across the board, it was just stood at the counter, waited for your food, then you went and sat down. We brought, we bring your food to you. Uh, value added means we, we do the extra mile in terms of our customer service. We, we try to get to know customers. We are friendly. We say goodbye. That's the definition of what we're looking for in terms of customer service. To be friendly and make each customer's day better. To make a difference with a customer, with each customer. To create a positive work culture where we grow as a team and as individuals. To win. To achieve excellence. This is who we are today.